Air power can be enormously effective. I talked to an administration spokesman who called me today, and I again reiterated the point. We've had 176 airstrikes versus 116,000. With 176 airstrikes, you're not going to achieve your objective. By, by the way, to say that we didn't know this was coming, many of you saw the story from a year ago by those who briefed the president that said, this is the situation. That was 12 months ago. So it's, it's, this is not a big surprise in terms of uh, what we have seen over the last few months. I guess the surprise for me is that it has taken this long to get together a strategy to deal with it. Welcome again to the Orange County Crosstalk Show. I'm pleased you have Serge Tomasian here. Uh, you were listening to Ed Royce, uh, the ch chairperson of Foreign Affairs of the House of Representatives. Yes. You were talking about how the U.S. should deal with the uh, uh, Islamic State. So what did you take about this speech? Well, I think uh, Ed Royce made some very good points. Uh, the first thing that I took away is that we're late in the game. In other words, uh, much more should have been done earlier to present, prevent the situation that we're in now, crisis mode. So that's the first thing that I think was a theme that uh, Congressman Royce uh, really focused on. You can't have the president, I didn't say this, but you can't have the president picking the targets. You've got to let your commanders in the field go out there, give them the task of degrading and destroying ISIS. And it would make, to me, absolutely no sense to put the 82nd Airborne into that cauldron over there when you have Kurds and Sunnis and others who want to do the fighting against ISIS. You know, this isn't the fifth largest army in the world. This is 32,000 insurgents, okay? You've got 190,000 Kurds. Let's arm them. I've had another meeting with the Kurdish foreign minister. We've been talking for weeks by phone and last week he came in to talk with me in the committee, and he still, they still don't have the equipment that they need. So I'm running legislation to arm them directly with the type of weapons they need to defeat ISIS. But we have got to get serious about this. And it shouldn't be a plan to, hand, to handle a manageable problem. It's got to be a plan that shows that we're serious. Secondly is that it's a team effort. Uh, it's going to take a team effort. An international collision. So exactly. For the reasons he outlined, uh, not only financially, but you want that political support uh, of the region. And this shouldn't be an American operation exclusively. I think he said America should take a leadership role, but other countries who have their own destinies at stake, uh, some of the Arab countries there, uh, have a vital interest there to protect. And they should be part of this uh, coalition. Well, we don't want to do this all by ourselves because we don't want the back, we don't want the blowback. It, it takes us back, Joe, it takes us back to that argument I made about special brigades. The reason we put the colonel in there and the reason we do the tracking is to get others not just to do the fighting, but also so it doesn't look like we've got a base in Chad where we're carrying out a campaign. So it's very important that we have with us the Jordanians, and they're joining tonight in the airstrikes. We've talked to the Jordanian ambassador about this. I had a long talk a couple of days ago with the Saudi and UAE ambassadors. They're joining in the airstrikes tonight. We've got uh, the French joining and several other small regional uh, players, Gulf State players are gonna be involved in the action. So that in the morning when the conversation turns to the attacks in Syria that occurred tonight. The focus will be on a panoply of actors, uh, but for this to happen, we've got to keep the pressure on these countries. It's not the natural thing for them to want to step, step, step up and deploy their, their air wings. But look, they're F-16s, <laughs> they're planes, we sold them. Uh, we, Anyway, uh, there's a little bit of diplomacy going on in terms of <laughs> urging them and reminding them that when Jordan, if, if it should happen, when Syria, Iraq, 
Jordan Falls, what do we think is going to happen in the Gulf states? You've only whetted the appetite. It is blood in the water. That is the problem with them taking all of these towns. So our responsibility now is to get others to come in as part of the air campaign, but we've got to coordinate it. We've got to lead it. U.S. leadership has always been essential in this kind of effort. Uh, interesting was the comment on Iran. Uh, I think there's different perspectives in terms of the role Iran may play or is playing uh, in this. Certainly we know logistically they've been on the ground uh, providing support to some of the elements in Iraq uh, and with the Kurds and with the government. And so there may be some areas where we disagree vehemently with the Iranian government. Uh, but there's other areas where there's, I think, uh, there's cooperation. And this may be one of the few areas where we have cooperation in a very strategic sense with Iraq, uh, Iran. And so uh, I think those are the themes. It's not for lack of trying in terms of approaching Iran or the Ayatollah. Uh, frankly, the olive branch that was extended uh, has not been reciprocated because the latest speeches I saw from the Ayatollah is still death to America. What we need to keep our eye on here with Iran is the fact that two-thirds of the people, according to the Gallup polling organization, inside Iran, want a Western-style democracy. Um, they may not mean our system by that, but they want a Western-style democracy without a theocracy. And Iran is the country, frankly, with the highest percentage of educated young people who really want to see a different direction. And I think, I, I think Congressman Royce was a bit critical of the president in terms of not developing the strategy early on. And, and, and if you remember, what he said was he compared the number of airstrikes, U.S. airstrikes in Iraq with the number of airstrikes that have taken place today uh, against ISIS, and it's a fraction. Yeah, I guess uh, the, the critic about, about Obama administration, they didn't have really a strategy to go about this and they knew this is coming. I agree with his point that the administration is a little late about what to do with ICE. If I can just say one more thing, Alex, and I think this is important for, for people to understand, I think people do understand this. ISIS is an enemy of a lot of different people. Uh, it can include Christians includes Sunnis who don't adhere to their version of Islam, exactly. to the Shias, yeah. to other minority groups. And so it's, it's, it's tactics, it's, 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 it's violence that they're perpetrating on a lot of different people. And I think it's that organization that is the issue, uh, not, not a broader swath of people. A lot of Islamic countries who really adhere to the Islam principles, they're said they are using Islam as a critics to do this kind of barbaric thing. So I think, I, I totally agree with you in that point. But, yeah. I think the things they've done, the terror that they have perpetrated on these people, civilians, I think hopefully has united the world, the community, uh, certainly in that region, if not the entire world, uniting them to say, these are people that engage in tactics that we don't agree with and we're not going to tolerate. Well, thank you very much. That was a good analysis of uh, Ed Royce's talk, and I hope uh, the next program. You said you're going to China somewhere. You want to mention uh, something? Yes, about I, your... thank you very much. As part of the World Affairs Councils of America, uh, I'll be on the leadership team that was uh, will be at visiting China in about two weeks. We're wow. ten of us were invited. I will be representing the uh, California, and we have nine, nine other representatives from the uh, World Affairs Council of America based in Washington. So it's a pleasure to be there and to. Uh, get some exposure in terms of what uh, what's going on in China. We know a lot is going on in China, quite a bit. Exactly. And uh, we wish you the best for you and your team that are going to China. Thank and you. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you here at our council events. Uh, you do a fantastic job of reporting this uh, in an unbiased way, and yeah, we appreciate exactly, yeah. your effort and we appreciate your involvement with no, our think council. I these are the very critical issues, not only World Affairs Council, but I think a lot of Americans don't know about that, and I think World Affairs Council help them to understand, see the bigger pictures of the whole thing. So having people like uh, Congressman uh, Ed Royce, or we had before a Canadian ambassador talks about uh, different yeah. issues with regard to the Middle East, I think World Affairs Council is doing a fantastic job. And People like you, I know you were the past president of the World Affairs Council, and we appreciate your work. Thank you very much, Alex. It's always a pleasure. Thank you.